Hello, I am Anuradha Malik. In this episode of Biology for Class 11, we shall deal with one of the most defining features of life forms, the cell and cellular organization. The cell is the fundamental structural and functional unit of all living organisms. We say this because all living organisms are composed of cells. Some, such as the bacteria and protists, are unicellular. Others, like us, are multicellular. Unicellular organisms are capable of independent existence and of performing all the essential functions of life. Let us revise some historical landmarks in the study of the cell. Robert Hooke in 1665, he observed honeycomb-like patterns in a very thin slice of cork and coined the term cellulae. Cellulae is synonymous to the cell. Anton von Leeuwenhoek in 1683 was the first to observe free cells like bacteria, protozoa, red blood corpuscles, etc. Alfonso Corti in 1772 observed living substances in the cell. Robert Brown in 1831 discovered the rounded body, the nucleus within the cell. Hugo von Mohl and Purkunji in 1839 called the jelly-like substance protoplast. Further structural details of the cell were understood with improvements in microscopy and the invention of the electron microscope. Another landmark in the study of the cell was the formulation of the cell theory by Matthias Schlieden in 1838, a German botanist, and Theodor Schwann in 1839, who was a British zoologist. Schlieden observed that plants were composed of different kinds of cells. Schwann observed animal cells and reported that they had a thin outer layer which today we know as the plasma membrane and that the presence of the cell wall was unique to plants. He proposed that bodies of plants and animals are composed of cells and products of cells. Later, Rodolf Virchow in 1855 modified this by adding that all cells divide and new cells arose from pre-existing cells. Thus, the cell theory as understood today has two tenets. First, all living organisms are composed of cells and products of cells. Second, all cells arise from pre-existing cells. You must have observed onion peel and human cheek cells under the microscope in your earlier classes. Look at these pictures of the human cheek cell and the onion peel cells. These are typical eukaryotic cells which consist of a delimiting outer cell membrane, a dense membrane bound nucleus and cytoplasm. Plant cells also have a rigid cell wall outside the cell membrane. The cytoplasm of a eukaryotic cell has other membrane bound organelles such as endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, lysosomes, mitochondria, microbodies and vacuoles. The cytoplasm also has non-membrane bound organelles, the ribosomes and in animal cells, the centrioles. Based on the presence or absence of a membrane bound nucleus and other organelles, cells and organisms can be termed as 1. eukaryotes when these are present or 2. prokaryotes when these are absent. The prokaryotic cell. These are represented by bacteria, blue-green algae also known as cyanobacteria, mycoplasmas also known as PPLOs, the pleuro-pneumonia like organisms. These cells vary greatly in shape, size and the functions they perform. Let's have a look at some different eukaryotic cells. Notice the difference in their shapes. The human erythrocytes or the red blood corpuscles are round, discoid and biconcave. Whereas the human leukocytes, the white blood corpuscles are amoeboid in shape. The columnar epithelium cells are long, tall and narrow. 
the nerve cells are branched and long. The tracheid plants are long, narrow, elongated, whereas the mesophyll cells in plants are round and oval. Compare a generalized eukaryotic cell with other organisms in this picture. Notice the difference in their size. A typical eukaryotic cell is about 10 to 20 micrometers in size. The human red blood cells are about 7 micrometers in diameter. Nerve cells are some of the longest cells. The largest isolated single cell is the egg of an ostrich. Prokaryotic cells are generally smaller and they multiply more rapidly than the eukaryotic cells. Mycoplasmas, the smallest cells, are only about 0.3 micrometers in length, while certain bacteria could be 1 to 5 micrometers. The prokaryotic cells also exhibit a variety of shapes and a variety of functions. Let's look at this picture showing bacteria of different shapes. These are the cocci which are spherical in shape, the bacilli which are rod like, the spiruli which are spiral in shape and the vibrio which are comma shaped. These are the four basic shapes of the bacteria. The fundamental organization of prokaryotic cells is similar amongst them. Look at this picture of a typical prokaryotic cell. The prokaryotic cells have a cell wall surrounding the cell membrane. The fluid matrix filling the cell is the cytoplasm. There is no well-defined nucleus. This means that the genetic material is basically a naked DNA which is not enveloped by a nuclear membrane. In addition to the genomic DNA, many bacteria have smaller circular DNA called plasmids. The plasmid DNA confers some unique phenotypic characteristics to the bacterial cell. These include the resistance to antibiotics. Ribosomes in a prokaryotic cell are about 15 to 20 nanometers in size and are made up of two subunits, 50S and 30S respectively. These two when present together form a 70S prokaryotic ribosome. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis which you have already learned in earlier classes. Several ribosomes may be attached to a single mRNA to form a chain which is known as a polyribosome or polysome. The ribosomes of a polysome translate the mRNA into proteins. Prokaryotes also have some reserve materials stored in the cytoplasm in the form of inclusion bodies. These lie free in the cytoplasm and are not bound by membranes. Some examples of these are phosphate granules, cyanophycine granules and glycogen granules. Is Gas vacuoles with are the found discovery in of the cell. Cyanobacteria and purple and green photosynthetic bacteria. But these are not bound by a membrane. Another characteristic of prokaryotic cells are special membranous structures, the mesosomes. The mesosomes are essentially enfoldings of the plasma membrane in the form of vesicles, tubules and lamellae. The mesosomes perform a variety of functions. They help in 1. Cell wall formation, DNA replication and distribution to the daughter cells, respiration, secretions. They increase the surface area of the plasma membrane and enzymatic content. The prokaryotes like cyanobacteria also have membranous extensions into the cytoplasm which are called chromatophores. These contain certain pigments. The prokaryotes, bacteria in particular, have a chemically complex cell envelope. This cell envelope consists of a tightly bound three-layered structure. The innermost layer is the plasma membrane which is semi-permeable in nature and is similar in structure to that of eukaryotes. The cell wall outer to the plasma membrane is made up of murine or peptidoglycan. This determines the shape of the cell and provides structural support to the cell. 
The outermost layer is the glycocalyx, which differs in composition and thickness amongst different bacteria. It could be a loose sheath called the slime layer in some, while in others it may be thick and tough. Here it is called the capsule. The capsule is responsible for the gummy and sticky character of the cell. The bacteria can be grouped as gram positive and gram negative on the basis of differences in their cell envelope and the manner in which they respond to the staining procedure developed by gram. All bacterial cells when stained with crystal violet stain pick up the violet color. Some bacteria retain the color blue or purple with gram staining even after washing with alcohol. These are called the gram positive bacteria while certain other bacteria do not retain the stain when washed with alcohol. These are called gram negative bacteria. This is because in gram positive bacteria the outer membrane is absent whereas in gram negative bacteria all the three layers are present. The gram negative bacteria have a two layered membrane. The inner is the cytoplasmic membrane and the outer is the peptidoglycan whereas in gram negative bacteria it is three layered. The innermost cytoplasmic membrane, thin peptidoglycan membrane and the outer membrane with lipopolysaccharides which is missing in the gram negative bacteria. Let us have a look at the pictorial depiction of the membrane in gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Notice outer to the cytoplasm is the plasma membrane in both. Outer to this is the peptidoglycan layer which is thicker in gram positive bacteria and thinner in gram negative and the outermost lipopolysaccharide layer is present only in the gram and the outermost the peptidoglycan layer is present only in the gram negative bacteria. Bacterial cells may be motile or non-motile. If motile they have thin filamentous extensions from their cell walls called flagella. The number and range of flagella varies in different bacteria. The bacterial flagellum is composed of three parts, a filament, a hook and a basal body. The eukaryotic cells. The eukaryotic cells include all protists, fungi, plants and animals. They have extensive compartmentalization of cytoplasm by presence of membrane bound organelles. They possess an organized nucleus with a nuclear envelope and the genetic material is organized into chromosomes. They also have a variety of complex locomotory and cytoskeletal structures. Eukaryotic cells of plants and animals are different. The plant cells have cell walls, plastids and a large central vacuole which are absent in animal cells. On the other hand, animal cells have centrioles which are absent in almost all plant cells. Let us have a look at the pictures of typical plant and animal cells. Notice in this plant cell a large central vacuole, chloroplasts and the cell wall. In this picture of the animal cell notice the presence of the centrioles close to the nucleus. To sum up today's lesson, let us recall a comparative account of the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cell. The prokaryotic cell lacks an organized nucleus, nuclear membrane is absent and DNA is not complexed with histones. Whereas in a eukaryotic cell, the nucleus is well organized, nuclear membranes are present and the DNA is complexed with histone proteins to constitute chromatin. In prokaryotic cells, the DNA is in a circular form and not packaged into chromosomes. Whereas in eukaryotic cells, the DNA is linear and packaged into well defined chromosomes. The membrane bound organelles, mitochondria and chloroplasts are absent in the prokaryotic cells. Mitochondria are present in the eukaryotic cells, 
and the chloroplasts are present in the plant cells. Photosynthetic lamellae may be present in photosynthetic bacteria. But remember, these are not membrane bound organelles. The ribosomes are of the 70s type in the prokaryotic cells, whereas the ribosomes in the eukaryotic cells are of the 80s type in the cytoplasm and 70s type in the organelles such as chloroplasts and mitochondria. The cell wall of bacterial cells is made up of murine, whereas the cell wall is absent in animal cells and in plant cells it is made up of cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin. Flagella are simple and made up of flagellin and the 9 plus 2 organization is absent in prokaryotes, whereas in eukaryotic flagella specialized 9 plus 2 organization is present. Cytoplasmic streaming is not observed in prokaryotic cells, which is observed in eukaryotic cells. Microtubules are absent in prokaryotic cells, whereas they form the cytoskeleton in the eukaryotic cell. Different kinds of pili are present in prokaryotic cells, while they are absent in eukaryotic cells. You should practice drawing label diagrams of plant cells and animal cells. In the next episode, we shall learn more about the other cytoplasmic organelles and the organization in the eukaryotic cells. Thank you. Thank you.